So on our alarm screen, let's click on our toolbox. And then we have all these grand options here. Is first, it can kind of be difficult to figure out what all we're looking for. So a feature we haven't talked about yet is you have this search toolbox. And let's just start typing alarm. And here is our alarm options. So we have clear all alarms. Definitely sounds like we're doing something there. We have an alarm message and we have an alarm list. We're gonna use both the message and the list in this video. But for now, let's click the alarm list and drag it over. We'll drag this up, drag this, and we're gonna make it the entire screen. I don't like these colors already, but let's go ahead and just stick with what's here so that we can see what we need to change. Okay, so really the alarm list is that easy to create. But now we need to configure some alarms for it. And we're gonna do that on the alarms here. But before we even go there, we've got to create a tag. So I'm gonna open up my tags and I'm gonna add one. And I'm gonna call this one alarm e-stop pressed. And that is gonna be a Boolean tag. And for our address, we're actually gonna look at this input nine. So if we go over to our connecting components and look in our global variables, just so we can get our format right, you see it's underscore IO underscore EM underscore DI underscore zero nine. And here's where in a future video, we're gonna show you how to map these tags and make life tremendously easier. But right now we're gonna do it the hard way. We're gonna type that in. So let's see how good our memory is. And we're gonna be looking at underscore IO underscore EM underscore DI underscore zero nine. Was that it guys? I think it was, let me drag that out. IO EM DI zero nine. And over here we are IO EM DI zero nine. Okay, we got that done. And that is gonna be from our PLC. And now we're gonna to go to the alarms area here on the left side. So let's double click it. And right now we don't have any alarms. So we're gonna hit the drop down, and right there it is, alarm e-stop pressed. And the alarm type will be bit. And we do have some options about numeric here, but we are using Boolean. A Boolean is a zero or one. It is a basic bit. And then we have edge detection. So what this is saying is maybe we only want to alarm the instant moment that we see it on and then allow somebody to clear it and it's no big deal or the instant moment that it turns off and after that it's not a big deal but in the case of the e-stop if the e-stop is pressed it doesn't matter how many times they clear it we still want it to show up at alarm because it is an issue so we're going to stick with equal here and then we have a value of zero or one so when do we want to alarm so right now my e-stop is pulled out and we are to a normally closed contact. So when our situation is good, input nine is on. We press the e-stop and input nine goes out, making it a zero. And so the value that we're gonna look for is going to be zero. There's also a dead band level and we may play with that uh, later on. Not for this one though. And then we have a message. So let's click our message. And we're gonna put that the emergency stop is pressed. And one advice I will give you when you're making alarms is don't make them cryptic. In other words, don't tell me that SW102E is a zero. That does not help me when I'm out trying to work on a machine. Say the e-stop is pressed, and you can tell me the location is whatever I just said. But let's give a little bit more descriptive text here. Then we also have the option to print and send an email, and we're gonna do both of those in a future video. And then we have acknowledge, display, and log, and we're gonna play with those. And then we have a background color, which we can change, and we're gonna play with that. So that looks pretty good. I believe we're ready, so let's go ahead and download this program. Ooh, and okay, we have a learning opportunity here, guys. Is 
I have a warning on mine. Tag, alarm, e-stop, which I accidentally hit the P twice. There's my first problem. I'll call myself out of that one. That way nobody does in the comments. With an address of underscore IO, underscore EM, underscore DI, dash, is either an unknown address or an unacceptable data type. And it is. That last one should be an underscore. So I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back to my data tags. And right there, sure enough, I put a dash. And that should have been an underscore. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and fix my typo. Uh, although it doesn't really matter. This is a tag. But still, it's an e-stop with one P. So now I'm going to download this. And as I was saying before that popped up, if you need any help downloading your program or any of these steps, we have a whole video series on this and just look down in the description for it. Okay, so we've downloaded our program. And first, right off the bat, we have this horribly obtrusive alarm banner across the top. And this is something I've never really been fond of on the panel view screen. And at least in previous versions, we couldn't delete or disable this, but we'll check it out anyway and make sure. But this actually is 101 of how not to do an alarm. And we're going to talk about a few ways that we could solve this. But let's close this before I say something I shouldn't. And then let's go to the alarm screen. And okay, so this is our alarm screen. And mainly, okay, we have some text that's definitely telling what's going on. We have this act status, but we haven't talked about it yet. And yes, I do know that that's acknowledged. But right away, my first thing is this is insanely too much sensory here with this color down here telling the operator nothing. So we want to change some colors around here. This really should be white or even maybe I'll stick with the background color TW controls blue. And we want to signal up here what's going on. So let's make a few changes. Okay, so first we have that alarm banner and it is down here and we can double click on it and at least used to, let's just see here. It does not look like it's disableable, but although it does look like you can do some editing up here. Now I am curious about this. Properties, you know, there, there could be some promising differences here and I may need to look deeper into that. Now, honestly, I do not actually use the alarm screen typically. I actually build my own typically for this very reason. But all right, I see a little bit of, I guess, ability to edit here. And I would be curious, and we may play with that later and see what we can do. Okay, back on our alarm screen, let's just click on the alarm list itself and go to properties and find our background color. Now, honestly, I believe it should be either white or your general background color, but let's just, yeah, let's just start with our general background color. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. We'll see. Is, all right, let's go back here. And we also have, when we have a border around there while we're at it, see this border? That just, it's, it's just another little thing that just makes it look clunky. So let's go ahead and remove that border, select none. Okay, and there, that, that just has some really nice clean lines. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, now let's go to our alarm screen. Okay, I, honestly, I kind of like this. And here I might would use different colors for different priority alarms. Obviously an emergency stop is something that's dead stop in the machine. It's probably the first thing that needs addressed. But usually you'll also have some warnings and maybe just some general messages. And that's where you can rank them different ways and do different things with them. But honestly, I think that looks tremendously better than what we did have. The next thing that I really see that's missing that I think is critical and probably should be on by default is what time did this alarm happen? In other words, did it, did it just happen five minutes ago when we got called to the machine or did it happen 12 hours ago and really has nothing to do with it? So if we go back to our alarm list and go to properties, then up near the top, we see here display and we have that alarm acknowledge column and we'll get back to whether that's important or not. But mainly we have alarm occurrence. Now we have a date and a time. I definitely think the time would be good. So let's go ahead and put true for the time. Now look up here though, this, this doesn't look good, does it? And 
that's just one that's way too much text there so if we go right here we have occurrence time and this actually is editable text well i'm not going to put the acknowledge time so it's going to be the only time so i'm going to change that to time all right and let's download this and see how it looks okay so now let's go to alarms and all right emergency stop pressed it's not acknowledged and our time looks horrible that's an issue we're gonna have to fix that our text really is too large for the column width that is available so we're going to adjust our font size and while it's really nice the way they categorize all of the features of this you also can sort them alphabetically which can be useful at a time like this because i know i want a font size so let's click it all right and there is our font size and it is 30 right now is let's just change that to 25 and let's download that and see if it makes it look a little better okay so now yep we've got a time that's legible now we have this acknowledge status column that honestly i never use and so i would take that out but we ought to at least talk about it enough since it is in there by default is what that is, is if we have an alarm, has somebody come along and said, ah, I see the alarm, acknowledge. So they've acknowledged that that alarm exists. Now one other little comment I would have just from aesthetics, I think I would want this left justified. And also there is a slight issue. If you notice right now, this actually is kind of showing up as an inactive alarm. And it's because we just downloaded this program. So I'm gonna pull this out he stops out. Now I'm going to press he stop again. Okay. Now first we get this banner. But okay, now we, it's clear though. So this is an inactive e stop and this would be an active one. And it gives us a timestamp of both of them. And I pull it out again. Now it's going to clear that incident. Press it again. It's going to come up again. Again, it's going to come up with this banner. And honestly, that is why I'm not going to go super deep into the alarm messaging. I don't think the alarm messaging works well, mainly because of the alarm banner. I don't know who decided that we needed the alarm banner, but that is not how to signal an operator. And here's the issue is if I'm working with a system that has, say, 10 alarms and they're all critical, then yeah, that's cool. We can have that banner. But if we have a system that one, I mean, I have some systems out there that, uh, and it's not by my doing, it's just the way they operate. They may have a hundred alarms and still be able to run. I mean, a lot of them are warnings. A lot of them are certain parts of it are shut down for maintenance. There are a lot of times, and I mean, if every time the operator comes up and there's this intrusive alarm banner, they're going to start just ignoring it. They'd never read the text again. But I think it is good for starting out. So in a later video, we'll, we'll go through how I actually do it. But there is one other thing I do want to show that you can do. And I think this is another important thing. So let's go back to our main screen. Let's go to our toolbox and we use the alarm list. We also have this alarm message right here. So let's drag that in. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a nice little message thing. So down here, if you notice, and we'll probably have to tweak our sizes a little bit, but I had this little bit of white space right here. Well, that's intentional. Is I'm going to drag this alarm message. In fact, let's just go ahead and make that a little taller. Let's move that up. And for now, we're going to snap that. Yeah, right in there. That may be a little small. But let's see what we can do. Is Let's go to properties of it. And first, again... By default, there are some horrible borders around a lot of this. Again, I didn't design the graphics software, but so let's go and find that border style and change it to none. Okay, and then we see we have that star right there, and that means our text is too small. And chances are this text is too small for what we're doing, but for our purposes, it'll work. So I'm going to change our font size to 20. And see our little star went away there okay let's download that and see what this little alarm message does that gives us a little bit of message of what's going on now it doesn't signal it really well so let's see what we can do to make that a little bit better 
So let's click back on that message and go to properties. Let's go ahead and categorize these now. And we have appearance. So we have alignment. Again, and there's, I think this would be better left centered. We could change the background color. The only thing is that's going to change it when it's not active too. So that could get annoying really fast. And then we also have blinking here. Now, maybe we can do something with that. Let, let's think about that one. And of course, we've taken the border out. We've got some font styles. Now we also have this scroll thing. And I'm not sure if that scrolls up and down or left or right. I don't know that I've used that one, but that one might be neat to try. So let's make the scrolling true, because I think this does help. A little, here's where I don't like a lot of movement, but okay, we're kind of wanting to draw attention to one specific area. And so I think that will help it. Also, I think the text was a little bit light for me. So here I probably would go with a bold font. Okay, so that definitely gives a little bit more movement. Now, again, I actually don't typically use the default alarm system in the panel view, but okay, that, that kind of brings a little light to it. And I'll talk to you in a later video about how we actually make this much more pleasing by creating our own alarm indication system.